Good morning, everyone. Our next topic or our topic, first topic for finals would be your foreign exchange market. Okay, so when we speak of your foreign exchange market, it talks about uh, converting of currency of one country into uh, the currency that of another country. So basically, when you say exchange rate, this is the rate at which one currency is converted into another. So why is it important? Why is uh, exchange rates or foreign exchange uh, market is important? So without foreign exchange market um, companies, let's say uh, international companies, if they would have transaction without the presence of your foreign exchange market they would probably resort to barter when we speak of barter diba, this is the exchange of goods <clears throat> to another goods so foreign exchange market would actually act as lubricant that would enable companies okay that are based in different countries to t trade with each other Okay, let's take a look at the functions of the foreign uh, exchange market. Your FX there uh, is your foreign exchange. Okay, so foreign exchange uh, market basically has two main functions. So basically, it's uh, used to convert the currency of one country into uh, the currency of another and it's used to provide some insurance against the foreign exchange risk or probably the adverse consequences of unpredictable changes in exchange rate so there are two main functions here there you go um number one there is that it enables the conversion of the currency of one country into the currency of another as i mentioned earlier diba? and then another is that it provides some insurance against the foreign exchange risk okay um however the adverse consequences is that there is unpredictable changes in the uh, exchange rates Yun naman. So international firms use foreign exchange markets to basically convert export receipts, uh, income received from foreign investments, or income received from licensing agreements. So to use the fund or funds that were generated in the company in its home country, it needs to be converted okay, to its home country's currency why because the borders or borders in an economy um, one must use the national currency uh, other currencies are actually considered as legal tender another is that uh, it is also used to pay a foreign company for products or services so for example um, if a dell company uh, pays its supplier let's say Malaysian firm um, with the use of their currency of course they have to use Malaysian ringgit okay for their orders to be honored Yan. and then another is that to invest a uh, spare cash for short term in money market so uh, in this third year in terms of currency conversion uh, it might be used for short-term money market investments so if a company has a sum of money that it wants to invest for a few months it might find that interest rates are higher in foreign uh, locations than at home so higher interest rate than the amount being provided by the home country okay so for example um a philippine firm has an access of let's say uh, 10 billion pesos and the interest rate offered in the philippines is four percent let's say it's in its highest uh, interest but if the firm will invest in uh, let's say uh, singapore or netherlands that offers 12 um 
dollars interest, then it would be more uh, profitable for them. It will be more profitable for them. Okay. All right. Next is that um, for currency speculation, the short-term movement of funds from one currency to another in the hopes of profiting from shifts in exchange rates. So one example of currency speculation is a uh, carry trade. Um, so an investor, for example, will borrow money from low interest environment economy and will use the money to invest in higher uh, interest uh, paying economy. So if, for example, uh, U.S. has 1% interest in their loans and Philippines offers 5% interest in its deposit then it is profitable to borrow money from the u.s and then invest it here in the philippines so, yan. so speculation here is expected that there will be no adverse uh, fluctuations in the exchange rates for both currencies though all right so let's discuss insuring against your foreign exchange rate uh, risk so first is your spot exchange rate which uh, talks about the rate at which a foreign exchange dealer converts one currency into another currency on a particular day so this is basically determined by uh, the interaction between the supply and demand and so the change uh, so it changes continually so in ensuring against your foreign exchange risk um companies can also use the foreign exchange market to ensure foreign exchange risk which occurs when unpredicted changes in future change or future exchange rates have adverse consequences for the firm so perhaps you may have heard of the term hedging um wherein let's you try to use this to describe this process so let's talk about he, uh, how this works okay first though you need to know that when we speak of your spot exchange rate it is the rate which a foreign exchange dealer converts one currency into another currency on a particular day so when you're on a trip for example to germany and you change dollars for euros uh, you'll get the spot rate for that day yeah so spot rates can be quoted either in terms of how much foreign currency the dollar will buy so keep in mind that yeah sabi nga dito uh, spot rates are continually changing why because it is based on the supply and demand of that currency yeah okay next okay so um the other thing of course that you need to know is that forward exchange rates occur uh, when two parties agree okay um to exchange currency and execute the deal at some specific date in the future using a forward exchange rate yeah so yeah forward exchange rate is the exchange rate governing a for a uh, forward exchange when you say forward exchange it occurs as i mentioned earlier when two parties agree to exchange currency and execute the deal at some specific date in the future okay so if you know you're going to need let's say um 200 thousand yen okay in 30 days to pay for some components your company imports rather rather than uh taking the chance that the rate might change over um let's say the 30 days uh you might enter into a forward agreement yeah to buy the yen now and then lock in the rate and then pay for them in 30 days when you actually need them. Yan. Yun yung sabi nating 
foreign exchange rates. So foreign rates are quoted, let's say, 30, 90, or 180 days in the future. So sometimes companies can be caught off guard when they don't hedge their currencies. By the way, when you say hedging, uh, this is actually a risk mitigation on adverse price movement in an asset. Okay. All right, next is your currency swap. So, uh, sometimes forward exchange uh, takes the form of what's known as your currency swap, which is the simultaneous purchase and sale of a given uh, amount of foreign exchange for two different value dates okay so usually swaps uh, take place inter uh, between international companies and their banks so between banks and between governments when they want to move out one of the currency uh, into another uh, for a limited period without incurring foreign exchange risk yeah okay all right now let's discuss the nature of foreign exchange market. So basically, when companies wish to convert currencies, they typically go through their own bank rather than entering the market directly. So yeah, and because of global network of banks, there is global network of banks, brokers, and foreign exchange dealers connected by electronic communication system. Because as we mentioned earlier, they do not go uh, directly to, or they do not enter the market market directly but rather they convert first their currencies in their own banks okay yeah and then um the most important trading centers are in london new york tokyo and singapore we call them primary uh, for zurich uh, frankfurt Paris, Hong Kong, and Sydney are known as your secondary trading centers. So, uh, why is London a primary? Because, okay, 37% um, of the foreign um, exchange market, okay, is done in London. So, New York, it has only 18% of the activity. And Zurich, Tokyo, and Singapore has 5 to 6% of the activity. So London uh, basically has dominance due to its um, historical and or due to its history and geography. So it is basically the uh, capital of the world's first major industrial trading nation and the world's largest for international banking by the end of 19th uh, century okay so there you go um another is that okay market is always open okay so primary market are basically your primary market as we mentioned earlier london new york tokyo and singapore are basically opened or sorry closed for three hours out of the 24 hours in a day so during this period if they are closed the secondary market is basically open so if exchange rate quoted in different markets were not essentially the same there would be an opportun opportunity sorry for arbitrage which is the process of buying currency a uh, low and selling it at a high price okay so you want so next is that there is integration of the various trading centers um high speed of course computers um or high speed computer linkages uh, between trading centers around the globe have effectively created a single market so the integration of financial centers implies that there can be no significant differences in exchange rates okay quoted in the trading centers so for example if the yen or dollar exchange rate uh quoted in london at 
3 p.m. is 120 pounds, uh, and then which is equivalent to one dollar. The yen or dollar exchange rate uh, quoted in New York at the same time, okay, that's 10 a.m. New York time, will be identical. So this is, of course, to prevent arbitrage. When you say arbitrage, this is the simultaneous buying and selling of securities, currencies, or commodities in different markets or in a uh, derivative forms in order to take advantage of differing prices for the same asset Yan, to prevent arbitrage all right um next is that uh, dollar okay uh, as a vehicle of currency but although a foreign exchange tra transaction can involve two countries most transaction or transactions actually involve dollars on one side so this is true even when a dealer wants to sell okay a non-dollar currency and buy another so a dealer wishing to sell for example a korean won for brazilian real for example will usually sell the uh, the won for dollar and then the dollar to buy real okay diba parang ganon Okay, so in 2010, 85% of all the exchange transactions actually involve dollars on one side of the transaction. Okay, all right, so that is the nature of your foreign exchange market. Okay, now let's talk about your supply and demand or the demand and supply, okay, as price determinants of currency exchange rates. So, if demand, of course, of peso increases and the demand of dollars decreases, for example, then peso will be stronger than dollars. How we wish, diba? Right? But the problem is that the underlying factors for demand and supply of currency is not actually established, nor uh, the measure for us to know whether the demand of a currency uh, already exceeded the supply or if the supply exceeds the demand. So let's talk about the theories of exchange rate determination. So I have a question. What factors are important to future exchange rates? Okay, so basically there are three factors uh, that have an important impact on exchange rates so we have here the country's price inflation okay a country's interest rate and the market psychology so how do these factors actually work let's take a look okay so in terms of your prices and exchange rates um the law of one price in a competitive markets free of transportation cost and barriers to trade identical products sold in different countries must sell for the same price when their price is expressed in terms of the same currency so for example if the exchange rate between uh, british pound okay and dollar is one pound is equivalent equivalent to two dollars okay a jacket that retails for eighty dollars okay let's say a jacket that retails for eighty dollars in new york would sell it to 40 pounds in london since as we mentioned earlier okay um one pound is equivalent to two uh, dollars diba? okay so if it is sold at 30 pounds in london then a businessman would purchase the same jacket in london and then sell in the u.s for profit of 20 dollars so however the increase in demand of jacket in london will actually affect the price of the jacket so the same with u.s uh, up until the price will be equal okay Okay, next is that uh, there is also purchasing power parity or your PPP. 
Okay, so the purchasing power parity theory, okay, given relative efficient market, we're in markets in which few impediments to international trade and investment exist. So the price of a basket of goods should be roughly equivalent in each country. So the PPP theory states, of course, that um, the ratio of currency exchange should be the same with the ratio of the price of commodities okay, into countries. So, for example, so if a basket of goods maybe cost uh, $200, okay, in the U.S., and it is cost uh, 20,000 yen in Japan, the PPP or the Purchasing Power Parity Theory predicts that the dollar or yen exchange rate should be $1 is to 100 yen. So your PPP basically predicts that exchanges in relative prices will result in exchange or in changes in exchange rates. So when inflation is relatively high, a currency should depreciate. So pag nagbago, let's say ang 200 pa rin sa US pero 22 ang pa yen, sorry, sa Japan, then of course the exchange rate is or would change. Magbabago rin yung exchange rate. <laughs> so, how does PPP theory actually work? So, empirical testing, it says here, of the PPP theory indicates that, that it is not completely accurate. Okay? In ex estimating exchange rates in the short run. But, it is relatively accurate in the long run. So, um, yun nga, sometimes empirical studies, as we mentioned earlier, uh, show that PPP or your purchasing power par parity, okay, isn't completely accurate uh, in estimating in the short run. Why? Because there are several reasons kung bakit hindi siya accurate. Um, let's say, for example, um, Yon, transportation cost, tr trade barrier, yon, these are some of the considerations kung bakit hindi accurate ang PPP in the short run. Um, what else? Um, it doesn't also consider the power of um, or the influences of price, control distribution channel, uh, and differentiate their products. The theory does not consider also government intervention in the foreign exchange market. That's why it is not completely accurate. Next, how do or how do interest rates affect exchange rates? So the answer is that there is the so-called Fisher effects. So the Fisher effects state that a country's nominal interest rate, that is your small i, is the sum of the required real rate of interest, that is your r, and the expected rate of inflation over the period for which the funds are to be lent. Okay, so in other words, uh, we have a formula here the i that is your interest rate is equal to r that is your rate plus l okay so if the real interest rate is the same everywhere any difference in interest rates between countries reflect different uh, expectations between or about inflation rates okay so basically, um, Irvin Fisher, yan siya yung nagpasimuno dito sa Fisher effect. Irvin Fisher explored uh, the relationship and developed the concept known as your Fisher effect. Yun sabi natin kanina. Uh, so when the inflation is expected to be high, the interest rates will be high as well. Yun. So the high interest rates 
are a sort of compensation for investors who are seeing a decline in the value of their money. So again, in the countries where inflation is expected to be high, interest rates will be high as well. So in order to in, uh, encourage investors to keep their money in the market, otherwise, okay, investors would simply shift their money elsewhere. Okay, so that is your, um, or that is the effect of interest rates to exchange rates. Okay, all right. So your international Fisher effect suggests that okay uh, for any two countries the spot exchange rate would change in an equal amount but in the opposite direction to the difference in nominal interest rate between two countries so in other words we have a formula here okay s1 minus s2 is divided or divided by s2 multiplied by 100 okay is equal to i1 minus i2 uh where i is dollar and i would be yen okay our respective nominal interest rates in two countries in this case the us and of course japan so if s1 is the spot exchange rate at the beginning of the period and s2 is the spot exchange rate at the end of the period meaning to say that the change in interest rates between two countries would have a direct positive or, or would have a direct and of course positive relationship with the exchange rate okay yon ito yung international fisher effect all right so how are exchange rates influenced by investor psychology okay so we have here the bandwagon effect uh, that occurs when expectations on the part of the traders turn into self-fulfilling prophecies and the traders join the bandwagon and move exchange rates based on the group expectations so governmental intervention can actually prevent the bandwagon from starting but it is not always effective so um in 1992 okay george soros a well-known international financer uh, made a huge bet okay against british pounds so what did he do he borrowed millions of pounds and then sold them to german marks uh, this helped push down the value of pound on foreign exchange market and many other investors jumped on the bandwagon and sold pounds as well so yun okay so in summary uh, relative money growth uh, relative inflation rates and nominal interest rates are differentials uh, or rate differentials are all moderately good predictors of long-run changes in the exchange rates but poor predictors of short term changes so international business should pay attention to countries differing monetary growth inflation and of course interest rates okay so i'm going to end my lecture here but uh, in the meantime you kindly form a group with five members and then Please try to answer this case analysis here. Okay, so your team is being asked on what decision to take on behalf of your employer. So a multinational firm based in U.S. or based in the United States of America. So the firm has a wholly owned subsidiary in Cuba 
in which it manufactures component parts for the assembly line of the U.S. operations. So one of the analysts of the company told you that Cuban peso will depreciate by 25% against the dollar in the succeeding year. So what actions, okay, if any, should you take? So additional information, the source of funding for the construction of the subsidiary in Cuba came from a long-term loan in the U.S. Mm -hmm.